All right, we are back. The Golden Blab, Adam Kramer, minus Kevin, our first Sans Kevin edition, but I am uh, a special guest with me, Steve Sobel, one of the owners of Power Events, Power Vending. I'm actually a little gun shy, Steve, because Kevin makes fun of me every time I call it the Peggot Tour. So we should rip that bandaid off. I, you listen to the pod. Are you yep. okay uh, with us? Are you okay with me? I do. I, you and I talk all the time, so you're probably used to me saying it. I guess you're just saying it, but it always makes me cringe when you say it. I mean, it's P-E-G-T. well, shit. Say something. Well, I've, I've say said something. It. I've said it. Yes, not in a while. Fair, but you know, God, it's like it's uh, mispronouncing somebody's name for like twenty I mean, you years. You said to flip the it into the end of her name. That's all you're trying to do. I get it. <laughs> that's it. Like exactly. So, all right. So we we have, we go a long ways back. And um, I, there are some questions that I thought about that I actually don't necessarily don't know the answers to, even though we've talked to each other a long time. I can't remember the first time we met. You can remember? I, can, I cannot. Oh, I, I couldn't either. I, I mean, we've we've actually, um, man, it's it's well over a decade. I mean, I've been with a company for 16 years, and you've been involved in this, and we'll get to all that a, a really long time. Um, so. Well, let's start with this weekend. We'll start with the weekend, and we'll probably end with this weekend. So we're we're recording this early in the week because you actually have to work, uh, and, and for good reason. You have the St. Louis tournament coming up this week, which is your kind of home base. So give give the laydown of what anyone out there who hasn't been to one of your tournaments can expect this coming weekend. Um, a lot of tournaments are like uh, they're a four day event. Um, it's kind of like a three ring circus, a golden tee. Uh, we start out Thursday night with a smaller event. We used to do uh, close to the pen. Now we do money shot, just a fun little cheap tournament, just to kind of get everybody into the tournament atmosphere for the weekend. Do a double elimination on money shot. Um, it's you know it goes pretty goes pretty quick. It usually takes about you know less than three hours to get done. And then the rest of the night that the guys are there like hanging out and just you know playing their one through five games. Friday uh, we started introducing uh, thanks to one of the players' wives. Um, uh, a noon tournament on Friday. So we do a blind draw doubles where you pair a, um, a higher caliber player with, a you know, uh, somebody just below them caliber. So it's not like two yep. of the best players that are together playing partner doubles. And we run that on Friday afternoon. And then Friday night, we do a satellite tournament uh, for the main event. So that's a $30 entry fee, single elimination and 25% of the field wins an entry to the main event. So the main event is Saturday and Sunday. You haven't been to a tournament before. We pick out five of the seven courses. We play a qualifier. Everybody plays all five courses um, with the same tee box, wind, and hole location. So it's all on an even scale. And then we rank the players one through however many players we have for the tournament. And then we put those into bracket play, a double elimination on Sunday, and you're playing light competition. So it's not the best player playing the worst player, so to speak, you know, in the first match on Sunday. It's, you know, the top 32 in one bracket, then the next 64, and then the next 64, yep. and if we get bigger than that, then another 64 or 32. So you're playing somebody within, you know, a couple of strokes handicap for yourself, usually, uh, you know, come match play. Um, you know, and, there, and there's some, um, you know, people that, you know, rise up and there's people that fall down, you know, depending on the tournament. So, you know, it's not, it's not looking at a list and saying the top 32 players are there are going to be in the top 32 and it you know, obviously doesn't happen. So, but you know, for, for all intents and purposes, that's the way it's set up. Well, that was, you know, kind of stolen from the people that get, came before us, uh, you know, with the purple bracket. Yep. Um, uh, you know, I think that originally I was around them, but gold determinants was, um, uh, you know, the, you qualified an upper bracket and, um, Either nobody played or people went to and out and um, didn't have what they felt was, I don't want to like overstate it, like not have like a positive experience, because I'm sure it was a positive yeah. experience, but they just felt a little more defeated, right? If you were not the top player, you know, if you had to play the top player your first match and, you know, you lose by 10 strokes, it, you know, wasn't a good feeling for that person. So Lance Bertram, as you know, came up with the idea of the purple yep. bracket. And um, when we got involved, obviously we borrowed it. I don't think I ever got his permission, but we're still doing it. So. I uh, I will say that if you've not played in a Golden Tee tournament before, I will never forget my first tournament. I obviously used to play at a lot of your events too. It is a different feeling. You can attest to this as well. You you've played in these tournaments. You 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 run them. You help run them. You have to marshal them, and you also play. 
Indeed. And uh, and you play competitively in other areas, but it's a really cool feeling playing these tournaments. So I, again, if you're really whether you think you're going to go out to win and you want to have fun, I always like just the juice I got uh, from playing. And I knew I was never going there to win. At one point in my life, it was can I make the cut? I did for a while, and then it was like, all right, even playing somebody in match play that I've never met was a cool. I don't get a lot of rushes like that these cities. I just right. don't, and I, that- I I feel like your 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 tournaments um, produce that now. I I don't know if you view St. Louis as special. It's like your home turf. But when I think of the start of your the tour that you guys have run, um, I really think of St. Louis because to me, I, I don't know. I have a lot of fond memories in particular. Uh, it's changed venues. Uh, it's been really fun venues the whole time. You've had great participation. Obviously, the local uh, St. Louis players. There's some great players too. Do you have a connection to to the St. Louis tournaments that you do every year? Yeah, I mean, it's where we started. It's the first tournament we ever did. It's actually the first place after we saw a Golden D tournament. Uh, it's when uh, Rust, who's one of my partners, and Jeff Harlow, a former world champion, yep. uh, they put together a, you know, one of the player charity championship tournaments um, you know, prior to us even doing events. And um, Russ told me to come out and check it out. I came out there on Sunday. Saw, you know, the, the miles of people all playing Golden Tee with all the machines set up. And I was like, oh, man, what is this? And um, I didn't really know what I was watching. Uh, you know, they had it up on the big screen, too, which I thought that was kind of cool so everybody could see. Um, uh, I watched uh, Eddie G beat uh, Litz in the finals. You know, I didn't I had no idea who what, what those players were or what their caliber was. I, you know, had no idea who I was watching. But, you know, I thought it was cool. And then, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, you um, you know, it's when we kind of got founded doing tournaments. And, of course, we were going to do one in St. Louis, uh, basically just for um, financial reasons. It's, you know, we don't have travel expenses. So, you know, of course, we're going to do one here. But it's good for us because, uh, you know, until more recent times, St. Louis is always our biggest event. And it's no big deal now that it's not. But, uh, you know, it's centrally located. So, you know, Golden Tee is kind of a predominantly Midwest game still. Um, so, you know, there's lots of guys from, you know, three, four, five hours away that can drive to it. And then uh, St. Louis has affordable hotels compared to a lot of cities and it's cheap to fly here. Um, you know, the airport's kind of centrally located to the city. So, and then we've always uh, self shoot kind of done this at a good time of the year, you know, before school's out. So, you know, people are still, you know, lives are on hold for kids in the summer and so forth. So it's always been a great event for us. The, uh, yeah, I would totally agree. I, I have like just accessibility is a big one. And um, again, a uh, lot to do and a lot of just very, very accessible suit for, for so many people to fly in. Now you brought, you talked about getting into Golden Tee, but I know you as kind of originally a um, pool player, which is funny. I, that's, that is actually a familiar path like Steve Sobey and others um, prior to Golden Tee pool and darts um, was a, was a, a very pathway in now i know you're still very passionate about pool but how much did you know a how into you were you or are you in, still into pool and how much did that kind of guide you into what you do today um and i would just i thought uh, overstate i wasn't like a great pool player but i enjoyed playing and a lot of friends that were the top pool players in the country um you know i played in a lot of leagues and went to these big huge events that they have for leagues out in uh, vegas every year and that was you know that was kind of a big attraction to pool for me is to go and see these big massive events with meeting people from all around the country. So that's, you know, similar to golden tea. Right. And, um, you know, they have a very strong pool had a very strong online presence, even before Facebook, uh, you know, they had a huge massive forum and, uh, that was just a good way to interact and meet people. And, you know, I had a lot of quote internet friends from pool that I never even sure. met before, uh, which kind of seems to happen with the golden tea world too. Like, you know, people, I always yep. say all the time, like, you know, I've never met so-and-so. I'm going to meet him at this tournament. No, this is, you know, and like, people are like, you've never met him? Like, so it's, so it's kind of, it kind of happens like that. And so Pool's kind of the same way. And then, um, you know, with Pool, I kind of saw what was good and what was bad. Um, you know, uh, Pool does eat, have a tendency to eat their young, um, you know, they're, and Golden Tea doesn't seem to have that. And so that was kind of what attracted me towards it more so than Pool. Um, you know, they, they do tournaments, but there's a lot more, um, and I probably shouldn't say this too much, but I mean, there's a lot more angling, it seems like, in pool tournaments and so forth with, 
uh, you know, just within the game or with that, you know, they try to run handicap events and so forth. And that's kind of, kind of turned me off. Any event that I ever played in Fusion of Pool was never handicapped. We had to just take my lumps and move on. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I'd rather not go to a tournament and play somebody that is way under handicap and feel bad about that. I'd rather go to a tournament and get beat by a good player or beat a good player, which I've done, and then feel good about it. So, and then, um, so when we started, I just kind of, uh, you know, I did steal some things from pool, like our website. Uh, there was yep. a, a pro pool tour called International, uh, it was called the IPT International Pool Tour, I guess. And, um, you know, they had player pages with all their stats like we do. They had country flags. I suppose we have mostly state flags. We only get to Canada players. And so, you know, I thought that was a great idea to have in history of stats that players could look back to and see and, um, you know, and see, you know, back in 2015, did I win that tournament? I can't remember. Well, now I can go back and see, oh, yeah, I won that tournament, you know, or, I, or, how, or how you did against certain players you know, in your career. So I thought that was all really cool. So when um, one of the players, uh, Jimmy Parker, came to us and said that he would build a website for us, that was one of our requests to, you know, put that together for us. We, we've used that, by the way, when we've had um, odds, actual Vegas odds in the World uh, Championship, that's been a big part of it because we uh, they asked for a ton of data. And and like, again, you you know, some, I don't know, some people know this stuff so well, they probably know it by heart. But that, having that information handy is huge. And I think it's really cool for people that are involved, whether you win it or not, you're like, you have a, you have a piece of this thing, right? And, right, um, forever. Forever. Like, it's it's cool. It's cool to be a part of it. And again, I, I think so much is put on the, the winning part. I, I think just, I love the communal aspect of it. Um, You know, I get asked, a, we get asked a lot, not just me, but, you know, over, over 15, 16 years, everybody wants to do a Golden Tee tournament. And I mean that in like the most, uh, like positive way people want to do, Hey man, I want to get it. I want to get X number of people in a room and I want to play these games and I want to put on a big ass event. And I love that because it's a genuine feeling and you know, it's awesome. And then you say, okay, great. What, you know, here's how long it will take. Here's the number of people that requires a machine, right? You, you, and you've done this more than I have, <laughs> I'm sure, because people are going to you and your partners and saying, Hey, you guys are amazing. How do I do this? So I ask you this because I do think that, uh, a lot of, uh, us or not me, cause we have to run these things too. And it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, how hard is it to, to do, you guys have a system now, right? You've mastered this over many, many years. But how hard is it to run a Golden Tee tournament well and efficiently? Well, I mean, I want to doubt ourselves too much, but I think it is sort of difficult. I mean, um, you know, uh, there's three main partners in our group, you know, myself, Russ, and Paige, and uh, we couldn't exist without each other. Um, I don't think that one person can do it. You know, maybe some people would argue that, but, um, you know, our weekends are long. It's a lot of hours, and there's a lot to do, and we've kind of set ourselves in our own responsibilities, but it's not that, well, I don't know how to fix the machine, leave this page, but beyond that, you know, we can, <laughs> um, you know, we can, we can all do each other roles if we have to, you know, um, you know, I kind of take on the onus of running the tournaments and the brackets, but, uh, you know, Paige has done it and she's capable of us can do it. You know, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, if I didn't show up to a tournament, um, you know, it would still get done, but, yeah, the tournaments are not are not easy. I mean, there's a lot of organization that goes into it. You have to, you know, work with a bar owner. Um, you've got to get the machines there. I mean, that's why we're in business because we can bring the machines in. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You know, you see on yeah. Golden Tee Fan a lot. Uh, you know, people post even in a smaller scale. Oh, I want to do a tournament on Friday nights at my bar. Well, how many machines do you have? One. Okay. Well, it's hard. It's if you had if you had 16 players show up. That's 31 matches at half an hour a match. Yeah. So it's going to take you 15 hours to complete a tournament with 16 players on one machine. And that's what people don't understand. So, um, you know, you have, you have to have the ability to be able to run it successfully because, yeah, people want to be there for the whole weekend, but they don't want to be, um, you know, pummeled by the tournament atmosphere the whole time. They want to be able to have time to hang out with their friends and socialize and, uh, you know, and hang out and maybe get away from the bar and come back to the bar. Um, you know, that's why we, that's where we try to keep the events as timely as we can, just to make sure that doesn't, you know, doesn't wear on people that really feel like 
I mean, that was just that was just too much of just hanging out and too much sitting around. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of what we tried to strive for. It like are you and me? I, I we learned this too, right? And we we don't run it. Uh, we we don't run the number of tournaments you guys do. In fact, you guys really kudos to you allow us to do this, and we are partners in a lot of ways. But you guys are putting in a lot of work, hard work. It is there really to present the stream and communicate with players and obviously it serves a role but running these things is hard it amazes me uh that something new will go wrong that maybe you've never you've been doing this a long time right so right. do you do you like abide by the philosophy that like something an internet outage a, a, tra a game whatever right something new will happen each week that will test you and maybe you'll have to make a decision oh yeah we, uh, it could we, we be tested. a ruling in a match like I, well you name it right yeah we've been tested um you know, uh, Russ has had the struggles just getting to events with uh, blown tires and, uh, you know, trucks breaking down. Uh, we had our truck and trailer stolen. Uh, yeah, it's awful. Know, that, that will, uh, you know, put a gut into you, you know, you know, when that happens. And you think, you know, how can you come back from this? Uh, yeah, and then the things that you can control is what, you know, probably cause you most frustration, like you're saying, like, you know, internet outages, power outages, um, IT you know screw-ups. I'll, I'll wear some of it, sure. Like, yeah, I, I, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. No, I mean, no, I can. I can, know, sure. I mean, uh, you know, we have to be cognizant of weather, even though we're playing inside. You know, players have to travel to a tournament. So, yep. um, you know, uh, that would ruin an event if one of Russ and uh, Kelly can't get to an event in the trailer. That's something we have to worry about sometimes. And uh, then, the two, you know, if the players can't show up because of the weather. Um, I think it was that first tournament that Russ and Jeff did in uh, – St. Louis was a big store somewhere, and then like all the Chicago guys came yeah. down on the train, right? So, yep. you know, they uh, pivoted in the right way to get there, but that's always not going to happen. And, you know, you have responsibilities to the, these bars because, you know, the bars are putting up a lot of money then for us to come in because of what Gold D brings to them for the weekend. And, you know, I always feel like we have responsibility to the bar to bring the players. And so I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, we do a tournament walking in March, and that's kind of like pushing the envelope, right? You know, yeah, you don't know. But I, but I wouldn't do a tournament in walking in January. Um, so, you know, things like that you just have to be aware of when you, you're trying to do events. And that's what I tell people, too. You know, you want to do an event, that's great. Just kind of think about all those things. Um, you know, what the player cost is for a player to be there. You know, you know it, it'd be fun to do a tournament in downtown Chicago, but at $300 a hotel room night, people aren't going to come. And Pros you know, and open, baby. Yeah, the frozen open, right? Yeah, and but, if you but, did, but, maybe, but it, but the twenty-five hour issue tournament we probably could do it, but yeah, and it was just never at the scale, right? It was awesome, right. and it was fun, and it was like, uh, and I mean, in the way, it was like a clumsy tournament where you could go and and you wouldn't fill out the room, but it was, you know, it's it, uh, and I know, I'll, I'll say this, I know what you have the time you put in uh, uh, to find locations. Uh, forget about like when the venue is there and all the things, the climate and accessibility like so you find a city that you like or you get a lead and the community is very helpful i know and has pointed you in, in certain directions like like anything else it's kind of networking but getting then a location to buy it it's, it's hard right like it's hard uh, i think i'll make our our, our, like our national location that was presented to us by one of the players and um yep me and russ just drove down there and cold called him and you know he had no idea what was coming and tried to speak to somebody and tell him you're going to bring a hundred plus players and oh and in order to do so you need to give me seventy five hundred dollars and they're you know that's like so i'd like to have that part of the conversation at the beginning instead of the end because you know it's no no sense it's talking to somebody for 20 or 30 minutes and then tell them then hit them with the you know that's not how i do sales right i know it's probably a lot of sales it's a leap of faith for these for these guys right. I, that's I a think. big leap of faith you know and there's then, nothing and like also, it right and then also you have you know i get it everybody wants to have a tournament in their hometown um, but you know, a lot of hometowns just wouldn't work. Um, one, because there's not enough big enough hometown player base there, or there's not easy enough for people to travel there or easy enough for us to travel there. Um, you know, so like, you know, we're based out of St. Louis, so we're only, we're only going to go a thousand miles or so from St. Louis at the most. I mean, that's a, that's a long time for, uh, you know, Russ and Kelly had to travel to an event, you know, there and back. So I mean, that's something that's, you know, has to be thought of. So. Uh, uh, but you know, there's, um, you know, it's good to see that other people are doing tournaments. And you know, we've never gotten to the, like the competition of it. 
Um, you know, I'm always for other people doing events and then try to help them. Uh, you know, Russ and Paige the same way they try to help them. You know, just reach out to one of us if you have any questions and we can help you. You know, try to organize it and give you suggestions on what's, you know, what's what we found is be successful and not successful. And, you know, I always felt like, you know, somebody goes to a tournament in, you know, uh, you know Houston or Washington or Connecticut yeah. or uh, wherever, they have a good time. Then they look and see, oh, here's power events. I'm going to check one of those out too. And that's happened more than, you know, I can count. So that's, you know, that's a, that's a great thing. The uh, challenges of this thing are real, right? Um, but you have to enjoy this. It has to be a labor of love. It's a job. I get it. Um, and I know when you're there, you, you have your, you have like your game face on and you have to, to run a, an event. Well, I well, um, probably have it on too much, but go ahead. Well, well, all right. See, I, I ripped on IT, but I, I, you know what? I, I didn't understand. I get it now. Like, because it, it has to be, you take it, you, you care about, it, right? So I'll defend you on this. Um, you care about it and you want it to go well and, uh, you want it to be efficient. But I also know deep down, even if you do have your game face on, you actually, I I'm assuming enjoy parts of this and what parts of this, it is a job and they're long days. Right. Um, so I can't yeah, relate to that. I, I, I what, enjoy, what do you all, enjoy? all of it, honestly. Um, you know, it's kind of a kind of a joke now, kind of in the golden tea community about my, um, you know, uh, tournament being at tournaments, right. So, yep. um, you know, uh, one year, Steve Beattie put that poster up in Milwaukee about the, the 10 things not to ask Steve Sobel or not to do to Steve Sobel during a tournament. You know, that was funny. Um, so, you know, things like that. Um, you know, uh, you know, I obviously need to be more patient sometimes. You know, people don't understand that there's 150 people in the room and um, I probably answered the same question to the previous 10 people. So, and I need to be more aware of that because... <laughs> You know, their question to them is just as important as the previous 10 people that came up and asked the same thing. So, uh, yeah, that's something that I could always work on for sure. But, yeah, I mean, I, I just love the tournaments. I mean, I love and I mean, you're right. It is a labor of love. And we do it because, um, honestly, it's for the people. And, you know, I'm not trying to overstate it too much, but uh, I, I'd have to look at my phone. But I probably have 300 phone numbers of Golden 2 players on my phone at least. Yeah, I mean, and that's maybe understating it. I probably have fifty close friends from Golden Tee, at least. I mean, and that I could think of, and um, you know, and then there's like a core of like really close friends I've made from Golden Tee, which is great. And other people I have too, right? I'm not singing myself out. I mean, this is everybody. This is why the guys come to the tournaments and get involved in Golden Tee, or even if not going to tournaments, why they go to the bar on a Friday night after work. Um, you know, they hang out with their buddies and play golden tea because, you know, it's just a way for them to, you know, to be around people that, that they enjoy being around. So that, that to me is what's, what we, what we do is for and what's great. Um, you know, it, it's a great community. You know, the people are very supportive. Uh, you know, I was out of work for a year and a half and I don't know how many players reached out to me, you know, trying to help me get a job or just asking me how I'm doing. Um, you know, any, any event that happens in someone's life that's, you know, pretty much also in like the, you know, the tournament community is kind of offset from the gold team community, right? But you know, anything that happens yeah. in the tournament community, uh, you know, the guys are there for each other, you know, 150%. And it, that's always great to see. And that's the way they stand up for each other is, you know, it, you know, just within life is what makes it all worth doing for us. I, I, uh, I've always, I've said this time and time again, um, I've always been kind of in awe at how little drama uh, a room full of people that are competing and care about what the game they're playing for money and they're drinking, how little drama it's produced, right? Right. Um, people are intense and they should be intense and they want to win. And I love that about it. But like the same um, spirit that you have of showing other people, want to show other people how to run a tournament. A lot of these players have in wanting showing other people how to play golden tea. Um, it's, I think it's like the lifeblood of getting better at Golden Tea is playing with people that are better than you. Uh, and I'm not saying that as an advertisement for your tournament, but it really is. No, like, that's great. That's, a, that's part of it, it for it, sure. It, you know, you come just out go learn. and watch. That's it. Go and watch. Not a beer. Or, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, walk up to a good player, say, uh, can I play a game? You know, let's do a shot and let's play a game. And, yep. um, you know, people literally walk out of tournaments two strokes better and, you know, anything you do in life, when you're better at it, you can enjoy it more. 
Um, sure. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be golden tea, just anything, right? So it's it's just a it's just what you know. I told the one uh, one person that interviewed me one time. You know, it's just good, clean, fun. So it is, and, that, and that's what it's all about. You know, there there isn't much drama. Um, you no. know, guys want to compete, and I get it. You know, I'm I'm competitive. You know, that's why I enjoyed playing the game. You know, to try and challenge myself, and you know, and challenge myself versus others. You know, that's what you know. That's to me what it's all about. And um, you know, for some guys, the, you know, it does have a financial aspect. But for most of them, it doesn't. And I get it too. Like, even though our tournaments are seventy five hundred, ten thousand added, um, you know, there's nobody getting rich coming to our tournaments. You know, mo- no. most most of the people going there are, um, you know, losing money for the weekend. If you want to put a, like a, an ROI on it, which they really shouldn't. Um, but you know, beyond that, there's there's not a there's not a large group of people. Um, you know, profiting off of coming to a golden tea. It's tournament. fun. It's a it's, it's a fun, pause right? on on life. Right. I mean, right. You, so if, yeah, if you, you want to think job, about it, kids. It, yeah, if you want to yeah. think about coming to a tournament. You know, for your ROI, it's it's not really for you. Because it's no. not really it's it's not really the element that you can sit there and and profit off of. And that's like you know, uh, um, you know, golf scrambles are the same, right? Like real golf scrambles. Like you, yes. you, you put up a bunch of money and a couple of guys win some money. You win some prizes. Everybody has a good time hanging out, and then you know you then you go back to your real life, and that's kind of what a gold tea weekend is too. I I was thinking about this, uh, you know, this afternoon but before we chatted about the fact that you've probably seen more competitive golden tea matches and meaningful golden tea matches, maybe than anybody. We've got guys that are coming to your tournaments that have been playing a long time and been around the game. Um, I don't know, damn near since the start of its existence, and I I don't know if you have a, a couple of single match and I really not a single match, but like when you think about your tournaments, um, are there a couple of moments that they could be matches, they could be moments, it could be celebrations, it could be anything. Are there certain things that stand out to you as being kind of more significant maybe than others? Um, I mean, I was like more recent things, you know, of course the Luna Haas match in Nashville last year. Disgusting. Disgusting. I'm sure you guys are throwing a clip, you know, hopefully of that. Um, yeah. You know, it was, uh, I mean, that was just, complete sickness of golden tea um you know that uh that was just two competitors you know the two quote unquote best players right i mean people can argue with me but you know they're probably the top two players in the world right now and um you know to go at it in the finals like that and to match shot for shot it was just pure crazy um you know uh, you know things that you know hit me like with good feelings you know uh, Jamie Arrington being the first female to qualify for Worlds, and and uh, you know you can see the emotion on uh, you know her face when she won. I mean that's that's you know that's powerful. I mean that's you know it you know it truly meant something to her, and I could see it. And that um, you know meant something to you know us at already Dance the same way. You know that's why we came to you and said, "Hey, let's do a ladies' event," and um, yep. you know you know give me a pass for worlds and I'm going to get, you know, 12 to 16 ladies to come out for this tournament. And, uh, so, you know, things, things like that are, um, what's, um, you know, what's, you know, what's, what's makes golden tea great for me. So. I, I, I will also add that in, and you mentioned it in difficulty as well. It, this is a community to really reinforce what you already said that through tragedy, through challenges, uh, this is people that will raise money for each other. This is people that will honor each other. Uh, this is a people that appreciates kind of just general history of where each one of us in this community comes from. Um, it's a it's a group that like through the highs and the lows is very supportive. And I know you already said that. I think it, I, I felt that way even hearing you talk too, because a lot of it, some of it's just sick, like Haas and Luna playing. Uh, and we will. Uh, post that it, it's it's just like the game at the highest possible level right being played right. and it's it's ridiculous and then there's other moments uh of history being made which you and i both really appreciate and a lot of people really appreciate um and and there's other elements to do where like there's a across somewhere along the way the player and the uh, and the person like there's an intersection point right and i think that's something that this community embraces both of um you know you you get to know these people as their golden tea name right like a ship in or whomever right and then and then you right. actually get to know the people and and what they where they come from things they've been through whatever and i think it's really cool and this is a place where all of that stuff kind of manifests i think in a really positive way um 
But uh, no, that's exciting, man. And, and I will say this, and you and I talk all the time. I uh, I talk to you more than I probably talk to most of like my good friends I grew up with. And we don't necessarily have to talk about golden tea all the time. In fact, normally right. when we talk, we'll we'll bullshit and 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 like good meaningful conversations to say, hey, right. how's how's so and so? How's this? How's that? And then eventually, you know, you'll ask for something or I'll say, Hey, we can't do this, right? You'll get to the business side. But even that, I'd say, is kind of in the spirit of what your events are all about. And I know we're really appreciative of it. Uh, not to turn this into a very serious thing, but I know and, and no. I think you know that. I've I've told you this directly, but I'll I'll say it again. Um you know, I don't think the competitive circuit of golden tea is anywhere close to what it is without you guys. I don't think worlds is anywhere close to what it is without you guys. And obviously uh, beyond hosting these events, had you guys also help out with worlds, which means a lot because it's a hard thing to do. And we don't necessarily want to do it uh, all the time because we want to focus on other things. So it's, it's, uh, it's really, really meaningful. So I thank you for that. So, um, yeah, I mean, you, you, so, you got to think about like how big golden tea has been in like so many people's lives. So, um, you know, yep. you can go back to, you know, Greg Kinsler finding his, you know, meeting his wife, you know, yep. through Golden Tee. Uh, you know, your, your, you know, your partner in crime now, Kevin Lindsay, going through college and then getting a job at Golden Tee. Now that's his career. Um, you know, it's, and there's a story like that over and over and over. I mean, you know, off the top of my head, I'm missing probably countless. Well, them, but... I'll give I'll give you an example. I have a Google alert set up, right, for Golden Tee. And so I get notifications every single day. The, the number of times it pops up in, in, in obituary, like you get all things. Uh, so-and-so does this, this bar has got golden tea. But right. the one that hits me the hardest is the obituaries because it's, Hey, this guy loved to play this game with his friends. He played golden tea here. And, and you see it because it's, it is a, it is like a gathering device. Right. And it hits everyone. I've never, I've never met these people in my entire life. And I see these things and I'll read them and I'm like, God damn it. Like we, you know, I, I have, a, it, it hits me every single time. And I, uh, again, I think people feel that way about this game. It is a game, it, it, but it's more than that. And it's brought yeah. people together. And obviously these tournaments bring people together. And I, and I think yeah. you make an important point. It's not, the competition is fine. Uh, but, but getting out for a weekend and enjoying yourself and having some beers and, and, and meeting good people, and and doing you know just being a part of this community if you if you want to get better at the game too you can absolutely do that. Yeah. Um, uh, this, this so is it, also uh, if you allow me to like this is a great segue for you yeah know, we have St. Louis here in the, uh, you know beginning of May and then you know we take a break you know so uh, you know everybody can go to Worlds but then after that we have our national event you know in August oh, yeah. and um, you know I've got you know it kind of clicked in my head I've got two old school players that reached out to me. Um, uh, you know, uh, Ryder Roberts and Steve Sovey that, you know, said they're, they're going to come. Um, I haven't seen Sovey since I think the last NIV, which was before COVID. And yes. Rami, I don't believe, has been to a tournament since 2015. Um, you know, so they're coming. And it kind of clicked in my head, well, let's do kind of like, like an old school court call out. Um, you know, you know, the thing about like us for our tournaments is, you know, I used to, uh, you know, take it too hard, like when someone would stop coming to an event, especially with a good player, and I'd be thinking like, well, how can Chris Thorbiger just quit Golden Tee? Right sure. Now? Right? I mean... Yeah, one of yeah. The, oh, it's, we uh, to all me, take it personally, to me, too. He's one of the top five players ever. And I agree. Uh, right? And so, like, after, and but, you know, he's been replaced by 20 other players. So, yep. uh, you know, it's this kind of... Robbery. And then there's still players that have still been around forever, obviously, right? And some that leave yeah. the game and then come back. But, you know, I just think it'd be great in Nashville to get some of these old school guys to come out and hang out. Um, you know, I remember one player, uh, you know, uh, Gibby, who just qualified for Worlds, you know, Dave Gibson. He came to Milwaukee great a few to years him. ago, and he walked in the door, and he could walk yeah. up to me, and he goes, I don't know anybody here. And, you know, this is a guy that's been going to tournaments for, what, 20 years? Yeah. And, uh, you know, but he'd been out of the loop a little bit for a while and then walked in, and he literally, like, he says, he goes, I know six people in the building. What is going on? So, um, you know, there's a ton of players that, you know, it'd be just nice to see. Even if they don't want to come play, just come hang out, right? Just come out. You know, Nashville's a great town. Come hang out. You know, meet me. I'm some. coming. Yeah, you're coming. You said you're coming. I don't think we've seen I'm you in. since probably 2017 either. And yeah, so, it's been uh, a while. It's been a while. And so, uh, you know, and then... Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, it's the 35th year of Golden Tee, so I don't know, maybe IT can do something for the players, like, 
35 free golden tees or something for everybody's account. You know, I mean, you guys can <laughs> well, find something. So, yeah, yeah. The moment I said I was, I was coming, and, and you, well, you told me about the old school. I'm like, man, I, that's it, right? So, and I think of coming to your events, Rodney was a guy I hung out with a ton. My golden tee player nickname, Big Gap, is from Rodney. Uh, so I'll be showing up with tight sleeves and Ronnie's like, Hey, where'd you get that? Maybe get yeah, right. Right. So Ronnie, right. When I think of my, my origins of gold tea, I think of hot rod. And of course, Sobe and Rodney were really close. Yeah. And I was just kind of, especially young, started with a company, hung out with those guys because they were great. Obviously they're just great people and great, they, uh, and great players too. So I could have a good time, not be intimidated to learn a shit ton. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I love the old school element of this. We've talked about it on the pod. Like, we're going to do more with the 35th anniversary, uh, both before, during, and after Worlds, up through and after our update. We'll lead into this thing for a really long time. So I do need to figure out something clever that we can do for your event. Otherwise, the river's going to show up and be like, you just could point to me in the corner and be like, hey, talk to him. Uh, I don't want to do on, that. They're going to get on Facebook and complain where we're going to get a jersey mm-hmm. That you're never going to wear You know, we're, sol- we're solving one problem at a time, right? One, right. So this one, I'm, I'm going to solve this one before it starts. Um, b- before we wrap, and that I am actually looking forward to Nashville quite a bit. What, um, again, St. Louis, give us the the, the final details. Because by the time this comes out, there's going to be time, especially if you're local, to go show up. So, yeah. you know, yeah, where, yeah, where, where can they go? Yeah, yeah, make that clear. Nobody has to register for our events. You can show up and just pay and play. Um, we like people to tell us you're coming so that we make sure that we have enough machines for everybody and the bar is staffed, you know, appropriately. And, uh, you know, just like anything, people like to see, oh, Adam Kramer's coming to an event. Well, I'm going to go to an event too because Adam's going to be there. So people like about to see that. the player list and want to see who's there. So that's always good. But, you know, if it's a, a last minute uh, decision that you have to come to the event, surely come out. You don't have to play in all the events. You want to come out and play in the handicap tournament on Friday night, that's fine. Or the doubles tournament that we're going to do on uh, Friday, you know, during the day, or hopefully we'll have one on Saturday night as well. You know, if we have time, you know, come on out and just enjoy it or just come out and watch, you know, and, and see what it's about. You know, if, if you have apprehension with a lot of people seem to do, um, you know, no one's ever been, um, uh, you know, child for, you know, how they play, you know, no, uh, you know, so, I mean, don't, don't be, worried about that uh, you know this guy shoots 30 under at eight every time and um you know you struggle to shoot 20 under just come on out and have a good time because that's what it's about so um yeah we're looking forward to it i think we got like 125 players signed up which is a good number uh, that's awesome you know, yeah i mean when we started i never thought we'd get over 100 and our first website was built for 96 players match male you know, max and then we had to you know redo it because it wasn't keeping the stats for all the players ever get and come to the events. So, and, and I will say, and I'll tease it. You and I are, uh, and, and obviously with, with Russ and Page, but we're we are constantly well, looking for ways to grow this, to support it, to add pieces of it. That goes conversations we've had over the last couple of weeks. Um, there, you know, like while you guys have been doing this a long time, I think it's important to know. I think there's going to be very unique things and fun things that we can we it can still help. You guys do. You guys are still going to run it at that. We just want to get as much interest and eyes, improve the stream production, all the different things that I think we've, we've tried to do over the years. And I think there's a lot of ways for us uh, still to support you guys, which we'll obviously continue to do. It's a, it's a very easy decision. Um, and I will say to to Russ and Paige, too, if you if you do listen to this, we, goddamn, do we appreciate you guys as well. You guys are, um, um, you know, all the machines, all the things Russ has had to stick his hand in over the years, the player stuff that both uh, all of you guys had to do, deal with. Um, it's it's a lot to handle. It is a lot. And I can say it's having to it's a lot. sit it's, on it's, the it's, other, I mean, other it's side stress, of the it's, table. It's stressful for us because we want to make it the best for everybody. And that's what, you know, stresses all of us out. And so, um, you know, we all wear it on our shoulders. And, uh, you know, all three of us care a lot about making the events as best as we can, you know, for everybody. And, uh, you know, that's what's important to us. So. You know, well, I've got uh, you know I'm I'm the self-appointed mouthpiece of it for better or worse. Um, yeah, and uh, but um, you know I two of the greatest partners I could ever ask for, and um, you know and, and that's why we that's why it works for us too. So yeah, if you want to start running tournaments, make sure you get some good partners because that's the only yeah. way to do it. You spend a lot of time with them. Well, whether yeah. you, you go to St. Louis or not, 
uh, go to P E G T tour.com. See, you right. know, how painful that was to say it doesn't yeah. feel right, man. It's, uh, I'm just telling you, that's a one-time thing. I'll try. I'll try. It's like uh, it's like changing the name of Glory Mode in Golden Team. Man. It's Glory uh, until death. Um, so, uh, Steve, look, I, mean, I, I really appreciate it. I know it's a busy week for you. We really appreciate it on the pod. Uh, we will have you again on, I, again, I'm sure, probably prior to Worlds, quite honestly, to talk about the event and size up things and, and get us pumped up, uh, which after this tournament um, is going to become – uh, a significant focus but for now it's on to st louis uh everybody check them out and uh we'll talk to you guys again next week